In this video, I'll walk you through the process of creating a mirrored object in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link to the photo that I'll be using in the video description. Now, your mirrored object can be any shape on any background, but for this example, we're going to use a 3D pyramid shape. To get that started, I'm going to lay down a triangle shape to act as our guide. So over here in the shapes, I'll click on the little gray triangle to open up all of our shapes, and then I'll select the triangle tool. I'll just click and drag to create the shape. And then I'm going to rotate this while holding shift to flip it upside down, and then I'll center it. If you don't see these snapping lines, just make sure you have snapping turned on right up here. Next, I'm going to trace out all of the faces of this pyramid shape, and I'll use the pen tool to do that. Now, if you don't see the pen tool, you might be looking at the node tool. Just click on the little triangle, and then you should be able to get out the pen tool. To trace out each face, I'm just going to start on one corner. I'll click on another corner, and then I'm going to click on a point somewhere here. I like it to be a little off-center, like this. Then you can close your shape. So that we can see the shape better against the white background, I'm just going to change its color. And just like that, we have one face of our pyramid done. I'm going to repeat this, clicking on two of the points, and then clicking on this corner over here. I'll close the shape and change the color, and then I'll just do all of the points, to make this last shape here. Now that we have all those faces drawn out, we don't need this triangle anymore. I'll just press delete on my keyboard to get rid of that. With that finished, now we get to do the fun part. We get to add reflections onto each face of our pyramid shape here. So to do this, I'm first going to select our background and then press Command or Control J to duplicate it. Then I'll make it a child layer to one of the sides of our pyramid. Using the move tool, I can move this around and decide which area gets reflected here. Now for this side, I think I should reflect snow. And I think I want the whole side to be snow, so I'm going to be a little sneaky and I'm going to increase the size of the background layer. Just so that snow is all we can see right there. All right, let's do the next one. I'll duplicate the background again. Then I'll make it a child layer. And for this one, I think I want it to be reflecting trees. So I think that looks pretty good. And one last time, Command or Control J, and I'll make it a child layer to this top area. Now, since this is facing upward, I do think we should be reflecting the sky, but maybe I'll include a few clouds there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So now that we have this mirrored shape reflecting all these surfaces, I want to make this look more like a glossy reflective surface. And a great way to do that is reducing the contrast. If all of these sides look too sharp and contrasted, it just won't really look right. So to fix this, I'm going to add a curves adjustment. I'll make sure it's set as a child layer to one of our layers, which it is, that's great. And then I'll just reduce the contrast. That means I'm going to be pulling down the highlight node, and you can already see that's looking more gray. And I'm going to pull up the shadows node. So you can see the before and after of that. I'm going to repeat this process for each one of these faces which means I'm going to be adding a lot of curves adjustments, so I just want to teach you the shortcut for adding a curves adjustment. All you need to do is press Command or Control M, and then you'll quickly have a curves adjustment pulled up. I'm going to drag this as a child layer to this other one, and then I'll do the same thing, pulling down the highlights and bringing up the shadows. And now you can really see what bringing up the shadows does. Those dark trees look so much more faded. All right, and one last time, Command or Control M. 
bringing down the highlights, bringing up the shadows. And now you can see we just have a much more faded surface, but it looks more like a glass surface. So I think this looks really nice. To customize this even more, I think I want to add some custom shadows and highlights to each of these sides. So to start, I'm just going to start on this face right over here. I'll add a curve with Command or Control M, and then I'll darken the curve. Now I don't want the whole side to be darker, I just want to paint this onto the edges here. So I'm going to invert this curve with Command or Control I, and now you can see we have a black mask applied. That means I can grab the paintbrush tool and I can paint in white paint to add this effect wherever I want it. I'm just going to lower the flow. That way I can gradually add this effect. Using the bracket keys, I'm just adjusting the size of my paintbrush. And then we can add that in. Here's the before and after of that. I'm going to repeat this process of adding shadows onto each of these faces. I'll invert each of these layers, Command or Control I, and then I'll paint in white paint to add that darkness. Now, if you ever paint too much, you can just press X on your keyboard to switch your color to black, and black will remove the adjustment. So that's a pretty easy trick. I'll just do this to the last face here. A nice dark curve. I'll invert it with Command or Control I, and then I'll press X on my keyboard to get out the white paint, and I'll paint that in. Okay, so we've added darkness. Maybe it's time to add some highlights. I'll press Command or Control M. I'll brighten the curve. I'll invert it with Command or Control I, and then I'm just going to paint highlights onto the very edge of each of these layers. So I'll just paint it here and here, but I need to give them their own curves adjustment. The reason I'm doing it this way, and it is taking longer, I'll admit, but the reason I'm doing it this way is just to make sure that each of these layers is snapped into the shape. I don't want to be accidentally painting these highlights onto the actual background. I only want all of these things to be painted on the shapes, so it's important to keep them all as child layers so that we can do it that way. Okay, I think this looks really nice. We have our object a little bit more faded, but we added shadows and highlights to make it look more realistic. I'm thinking this looks really good. So with our object done, I'm just going to add some final touches to bring everything together. And the first thing I want to do is just adding a shadow on the ground beneath our object. To do that, first I'm going to hold down shift and select all of these layers, and then I'll group them together with command or control G. Then I'll add a pixel layer on top of that. Using this pixel layer, I want to paint this exact pyramid shape, so I'll hold down Command or Control, I'll click on the group icon, and you can see now that shape has been loaded as a selection. So now I need to choose a color to paint for our shadow, and honestly the shadows in this picture are pretty light, so I'm just going to select one of those colors. I'll apply it to my paintbrush. And then I can paint this color into our shadow. I'll just increase the flow first. All right. And then I'll paint this in. To me, this looks a little too light. I think I'm actually going to deepen this color a little bit on the color wheel. There we go. And now I'll press Command or Control D to deselect. And using the Move tool, I'm just going to flip this upside down while holding shift. Okay, and now we can position it. Now in this case, you don't want your shadow to be touching the object. That'll make it look like the object is on the ground. I want this to look like it's floating, so I need to lower the shadow down like this. All right, let's make some adjustments to our shadow now. I'm going to lower the opacity so that we can see through it. 
Then I'm going to grab the perspective tool. Using this tool, you can click on the corners to warp the perspective of your object. I want to make the shadow look like it's going off to the side a little bit, but I still want to make sure that this and this are matched up. So I'm just going to pull this out a little bit and then I'll press apply. The edges are looking really crisp and a great way to make shadows look less crisp is to go to our filters and apply a box blur. I'll just increase the radius and now you can see the edges are starting to look a bit more fuzzy. I think that looks good. Okay, and last, shadows are usually darker as they're closer to the object. So I want this to kind of fade outward. To do that, I'll just select this layer and then I'll apply a mask. Then I'll grab the gradient tool and I'm just going to click from this area outward to fade this out. Okay, now it's time for one last finishing touch to bring everything together. I want to overlay a sunburst right in this area. So first I'll go to our shapes. I'll select the ellipse tool and I'll just click and drag out a circle shape. Then I'm going to grab the gradient tool and from the center, I'm going to click and drag outward. I want this center to stay white and for this outer node, I'm going to change it to an orange color. Then I'm going to change this gradient from linear to radial. To make this really look like a sunburst, I'm going to add a very intense blur to this layer. So I'll go to the filters and I'll apply a Gaussian blur. And when I bump this all the way up, it's still not blurred enough. So I'm actually going to type in this box 700. Once you press enter, you can see what that looks like. I think this is pretty nice, but it might still be a little too intense. So I'll select this layer and I'll just lower the opacity a little bit. All right, and there we have it. With that sunburst overlaid on top of our object, it really makes this object look like it belongs in the scene. So with that, our mirrored object is finished. Great work. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.